Greetings and welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We are in 2 Kings. We have finally arrived to the second beautiful book of the kings and the history of Israel, the prophets, and the planet Earth. Second Kings chapter 1. Some very awesome and powerful incidents and miracles that Elijah per performs, prophesies, interprets, and acts in the power of God Almighty. You have the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. Northern Kingdom, pretty much all evil kings. Southern Kingdom, some good kings. Sometimes the kings in the south made the mistake of joining in a covenant or a war, how you say, parlay with a northern kingdom for the sake of battle. Just happen. Things happen. And Second Kings, we get some stories that are really not found in the other sections of the historical books. Some cool things we find out. And with that little tune of the flab, let's begin. Second Kings, chapter 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria. Ahaziah was the handoff, the son of Ahab. He now picks up where in the evil where Ahab left off. And now circumstances, accidents, are happening. And we'll see why God judges the son of Ahab. Because it's part of the prophecy that God said he was going to judge his offspring and his kingdom and him in the days after him and his children. Because he was evil. He has evil children. And they're going to continue on with the evil. And no doubt, God is patient and kind but eventually, he puts down the gavel of judgment. And sometimes it's accidents, circumstances, death, failure. God is patient. He is kind, but he's also a jealous and a consuming fire. And he will not tolerate evil. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and he was injured. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. So he's sending messengers to go inquire of the demon prophets, the demon witches, the wizards. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up and intercept the messengers of Ahaziah, and say unto them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? the demon 
that administers Fowler's Alber, cheap magic tricks to entice the peoples to worship it. Because there's only one true God, Yahweh, Elohim, Yehovah, through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Yeshua, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the God of Israel. There is only one God in this universe, in this creation. Anything else is a lie and is a demon. There's only one God. And one way to him, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So this evil king looks to what would happen in the modern day would be seances, going to a fortune teller, throwing down the tarot cards, you know, magic. But they didn't want to seek the living and true God. So the Lord sent Elijah. Thou shalt not come down from your bed of injury on which you are gone up, but ye shall surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back, Unto Ahaziah, he said unto them, Why are you back so soon? They said unto him, A man came up to us and said, Go turn back unto Ahaziah and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Is it not because there is a God that is not present in Israel? that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the demon god of Ekron. Therefore thou shalt not come down from the bed on which you are gone up, but you shall surely die. You shall surely die. It's a done deal. It's going to happen. Ahaziah, says unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, He was a hairy man. He was a, he was a long-haired bear. He was a long-haired hippie. He had, he had a little ponytail. He had a little ponytail on his head. You know, when the Bible says, you're a hairy man. You're like uh, Samson. Like he's got. Here you go. You got. You got. You got a little. He had a little ponytail back there that keeps the sun off your back in the summer and the the cold off the back of your neck in the winter time. Gave Samson power. It was a sign. The vow of the Nazarite was a long hair. Was a long haired. Hippie Viking. Samuel the prophet. He was a long hair. And then he asked, What did he look like? He, Elijah. He was a long hair. He had a ponytail or thereabouts. So they understood whatever they did. Ponytails, braids, whatever they did. He was a long hair. That was our man Elijah. Most importantly, he was a man of God. And he spoke the truth. He was a long hair, and he had a leather belt. And immediately, Ahaziah knew who it was. It's Elijah. He thinks he's going to whip out some military might, Threaten him to get his way. 
So the king said unto a captain of fifty and his troops, Go up and get me this Elijah. So the king sent unto the captain with his fifty, and they went and they found Elijah sitting on a hill. And they said unto him, Though thou man of God, the king has said, Come down and appear before him. Elijah don't mess around. He says, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty with fire. A boom, like a lightning bolt. One time I was out on a big deck outside. They had a had an overhang and there was a lightning storm, storm but I had... Uh, Two of my youngest girls out there, and they're helping. We were rolling it out. It was an enamel or epoxy something. And they were very young, and I was busy working. And they were helping like, you know, young ladies, young bear cubs do. And there was a lot of lightning, but we were trying to get the job done. And right off the porch, there was a big, whoosh, a big ball of fire from a lightning bolt. Boom! That you could feel the static energy. It was like the hand of God came out and went, Boom! I'm with you and I protect you and you can fear nothing. Because I'm here. That was just a, a symbol of my power. Nobody got hurt. It was just cool. It was a boom! These guys here, they got the boom with the fire. And they had something to fear because they opposed God and they opposed God's word to the nation of the northern kingdom of Israel. So fire came down and burned them too crisp like bacon. They consumed him, the captain, and his 50 men. Again, the king. King wasn't discouraged by the hand of God. Sent again another 50. With his 50 troops. And the captain commanded of this Elijah, our man, our long-haired prophet, the king commands you to come down and peer before him. Elijah was cool. He wasn't ready to have camaraderie quite yet. I mean, we reach out sometimes in a in a way just to just to grab on some some camaraderie with someone in an unexpected way, just to give him a big bear hug, help him carry something, and carry it for him. Because they want to establish godly camaraderie. But Elijah wasn't quite ready for that. The Lord hadn't spoken to him because the man hadn't come before. Prophet of God. With the right attitude. The right contrition and humility of seeking the word of the Lord. The king don't care about his 50 men. He just wants what he wants. He wants vengeance. So he sends out another 50. This captain does the same thing. He didn't learn. He didn't learn from Dunkirk. That's a, it's just an expression. That's a modern day expression. Elijah answered, the second 50, come down immediately. That's kind of paraphrased. The second captain calls to Elijah on the hill. His soldiers are ready for, for dragging the prophet off. The prophet says, if I'm a man of God, 
let fire come down from heaven and boom, another one of them whoop, lightning bombs came to the ground and we had another pile of bacon, 50 more soldiers with their weapons and armor and so forth. Now, King does it again. He, he don't care about his troops. He just wants what he wants. So he sends out a third captain. The third captain comes out in a whole different attitude. This third captain with his 50 troops went up and fell before Elijah on his knees and said, I pray thee, O man of God, for my life and the life of these my troops. May they be precious in thy sight. There came down fire from heaven and burn up the two captains before me. But now, Elijah, let my life be precious in thy sight. Fair enough. Sometimes there's, how you say, delegation. I've used the word parlay already today. I'll, I'll use it again. Parlay. A, a slight compromise. But we're going to still speak the truth of the word of God. This time, the angel of the Lord appears unto Elijah and says, Okay, go down with him. Be not afraid with him and speak. And he arose and went down with this third group of 50 soldiers. They were like recon rangers. They were green berets. They were Air Force Special Forces. These were Navy SEALs. And God spared their lives and said to Elijah, Go, appear before the king. So Elijah appears before the king, speaks unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ikron, is it not because there is no god in Israel? to inquire of his word. Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but you shall surely die. If the prophet of God comes to you and says, you're going to surely die, that's the time to repent of your sin and get your life right with God right now. Perhaps God will have mercy. Perhaps God will at least forgive you of your sins so that you can inherit glory and be in paradise. In this time and age, in the center of the earth where there was a paradise for the saints and there was a different place for the wicked, for the evil, for the godless. This would be the time right now to seek out the forgiveness of the God of Israel, the God of creation. Yahweh, forgive me of my sin. But there's no speaking of that. It just simply says, he died. And whatever God does, my friend, is fair. Don't kid yourself. God is fair. You and I know it. He's been fair with you. He's been fair with me. Enough said. Let's go on. So this Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. That's the son of Jehoshaphat in the south. Same names, similar names, different kinds of people, 
different places, but they had some, like now people name their names, you know, whatever it is. I want to use people's names, but and then all of a sudden you meet other people with it, and they, they name their kids that. I was like, what? How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know how it happens, but I know I we have kids in their age range, and they name their kids, and then, and you run into all other kind of kids with the same names. It's amazing. I think God does that. You know, kind of puts in our heart what's what's the right name for this age. I don't know. But it does seem to happen. Anyway, so that happened here. Two kings, very similar, if not identical, names. Jehoram in the north, Jehoram in the south. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? God was fair, was he not? Truly, God is merciful to each and every one of us. On the cross of Jesus Christ, there was two wicked men. There were sinners. They are suffering the consequences of their acts. They have, were guilty of, of robbery, murder, Revolt. We don't really know all the crimes. We, we don't really know. But it was obvious they were guilty of their crime. Jesus was not. And he hung in the center. And he had one on each side. And yet in all of that, in the end, one of those thieves, it says thieves, he was a wicked man. They probably committed murder. We're not clear on that, but it was obviously a heinous crime that they committed and they got a heinous execution. And those two had a choice. One of them, if you remember, called unto Jesus and he spoke and he he spoke truth to the other man that was being crucified. The sinner Two sinners on crosses went up. But one got taken down as a righteous man. He corrected the other man. He said, we're guilty of our sins and we are getting this fairly. And that's usually the, that's usually the mentality of a, a murderer. Somebody that is killed. It weighs on your conscience. And knowing that you're getting the death penalty is like there's a, Okay, I deserve it. There's like a, a cleansing, a freedom. But in that hour, certainly it's time for you to say, God, remember me. Remember me. Forgive me. That thief, he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Remember me. I'm guilty I need your forgiveness. Wash me. I want to be with you, Jesus. Those are not exact words. That's paraphrased. As in, in Hebrew and Aramaic, they said different things that we don't really understand. But Jesus understood. Jesus understood. He said to that robber that cried out to him, Remember me, Lord. Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me. In paradise. And he's talking about in the center of the earth, where there's a paradise for the saints, and there's another compartment for the wicked, for the sinners. The abuso for the wicked, and paradise for the righteous man, where Abraham and countless saints from days gone by that were righteous in God's eyes spent their days until the end, when Jesus appears in the sky and catches all the saints up off of the earth and enters the earth, a different person in their eternal bodies. Because there was a resurrection when Jesus paid the price for our sins. 
Amen.